Hi, this is Michelle Ockers. Um, I'm here to give you a guided tour through the community of practice space we've set up on SharePoint 2013 for our maintenance and engineering community at Coca-Cola Amatil in supply chain. Um, all of this has been developed by myself, a non-IT person, an organisational learning practitioner, using standard SharePoint 2013 functionality. So what you're seeing here at the moment is the, um, I've used screenshots on PowerPoint so that I could um, blank out basically um, information like names and other details that uh, were inappropriate to share. So unfortunately, it's not a live demonstration, um, but I have just walked through and taken screenshots of a range of the features we've built into the site. So from this maintenance and engineering SharePoint page, this is a landing page for all of maintenance and engineering. You'll see here one of the items on the left hand menu is the community hub. And when someone clicks on that hub, they're taken to um, this dashboard. Now the dashboard is basically a set of links. Um, we've got both links to other locations on SharePoint as well as external links to internet resources that are relevant to this group of people. I'm not going to explore the external links at all today. We'll just look at the links to spaces we've set up and resources we've set up on SharePoint for the team to use. Um, so from here, the first place I want to take you is the discussion forum. And if we were to click on this link, um, we see a standard SharePoint discussion board, which we've set up for the group to use. Um, you'll see we haven't used any community site features. Um, our organisation is still figuring out how they work and IT is building up confidence over time in those features before they're available for general use. But we were able to add the ability to like items and tick best replies. So there's a little bit of um, community type features or community site type features built into the discussion forum. So what you see here is a board with a series of discussions. Um, you can sort and filter the discussions based using these particular items just on top of the discussion list. So the first one there is recent and the view that gives you of the discussion board is the most recently active discussions. Um, what you see here is a combination of discussions relating to the Work, Connect and Learn program that we're currently conducting with all of our maintenance and engineers across Australia and New Zealand to equip them with the skills, the technical skills, and also the behaviours to um, interact in the community of practice. So we're using this forum for um, posting content as well as posting activities to which the participants reply. Um, but we've also encouraged the group because this is their normal working space. We haven't set up a separate learning space. So we've encouraged them to start posting um, discussions that relate to their day-to-day -day work. So we've certainly got one here um, about use of link by our night shifts as well as one specific issue that was raised during the first webinar we ran. Um, one of our engineers got straight in and raised an issue about a technical problem we're having with equipment at one of the sites. Um, the next view that we get is the what's hot view. This organises the board based on the level of activity of the particular discussions. And you'll see this top item here has eight replies and 10 likes. So it's been um, the most active and also the most recently active. And thirdly, my discussions. In this view, you get to see all of the discussions that you yourself have created. So you can see these are the ones that I've created for the Work, Connect and Learn module. What about searching for something? If you, if you don't see it in one of those views, um, what you can do is use this search this site um, feature. There's actually a drop down menu here where you set your search parameters. You can search across everything in SharePoint. Um, you can search just across a site. You can search for people or you can search just everything. Um, so in this particular instance, we're going to search the site and we've entered uh, PET, which is an acronym um, for 
uh, that we use for a particular type of materials in our bottles. Um, so when you click on PET and do a search, it pulls up everything in the site, not just on the discussion forum. But you can see here that we can quickly identify through the quotation marks that this particular post is a discussion forum post. If you hover over a particular um, item when the search comes back, you get some more details. In this particular instance, you start seeing the discussion posts and the threads in the discussion. Um, whilst I've blanked out the details of who's posted each item in the discussion thread and their photo, you also do get those details. So if we were to click on the actual discussion title, it takes you into the discussion board and pulls up the discussion um, with the complete discussion thread. Again, I've blanked out some of the details here, but what you will see here for each of these items in the discussion thread is what you're seeing down here for Helen Blunden. You're seeing a name and a photo, and you will get that um, coming up on the board with the full discussion thread, which you can scroll down um, and reply or like any particular item in the thread. Um, from here, if we're to return to the community hub and take a look at the next element, what we're going to look at now is a shared notebook, a OneNote, Microsoft OneNote notebook, which has been set up on the site. We can get to it either through the dashboard or through this link on the left hand side. If we open that up, you'll see there's a couple of sections in this notebook. One is the Work, Connect and Learn program. So spaces we've created to um, conduct activities during the Work, Connect and Learn program for each of the modules, as well as there's a space there, a section that's been created um, that's been used for monthly maintenance manager meetings to coordinate those meetings and keep records of those meetings. Um, so if we were to go back to the community hub, just using the back button here would be the quickest way to go back to that community hub. The next um, resource we've set up is a contact, di contact directory using standard SharePoint functionality to build the contact directory. Um, basically under each of these arrows, if we were to click on any one of these arrows, is a list of contacts for um, specific uh, types of interest. So we've built at this stage contact list for our engineering managers, our maintenance managers, our national team, and then we're starting to build some site specific team lists. A person can belong to multiple contact lists. So for instance, another contact list we're going to add is our um, key users for one of our key maintenance systems. And those key users will also appear on their site specific lists. And what you get when you open up one of these is a, um, a display of uh, a summary of key SharePoint profile information. You can click on information in that profile to send an email, to get contact details, or click right through to that individual SharePoint profile. So that's a pretty handy way of um, building a contact directory. We then go to the community hub again. The last area I'd like to show you is this knowledge sharing area which we've set up. It's actually a separate site on SharePoint called Supply Chain Knowledge Bytes. Um, this is just a new site which we're about to launch. We're in the final stages of testing now. Um, from this site, um, you can create, edit or view a knowledge byte which is simply a short piece of knowledge or how to do something, tips on any topic related to supply chain. So it's intended for use by anyone in supply chain. Anyone is free to create, edit or view a byte. Um, and it does not replace controlled documents like work instructions and so on. It's more supplementary knowledge sharing. We found people were um, not sure where or how to share knowledge. So we've set up this space to help people to figure that out and to provide them with a standard way of doing that. Um, from Create, Edit or View or Byte, you basically open up um, a custom list that's been built. Although I call it a custom list, it's not custom development functionality in SharePoint 2013. I've built this using standard out of the box SharePoint functionality. Um, although I have to, had to define uh, content 
columns and content types or, or custom columns and custom content types to create the Knowledge Bytes functionality. You see here what you have here is a list of all of the Knowledge Bytes. We've only got three at the moment because we're just kicking off the site. Um, in this display you get the title of the byte. Um, enterprise keywords which are useful to help with searching the byte status you'll see here we've got red which is when a byte is newly created and in development orange is when it's um, at draft stage and experts are reviewing it and then once the experts review is completed the status will be changed to green and again we've been able to add in a like functionality um, which will help to identify those knowledge bytes that people are finding the most useful um, to search for an item you've got a search functionality there which would just search on the items in this custom list so in this case we've entered the search term PPDS and it's just pulled back the one knowledge byte that relates to that term if we click on the title of that knowledge byte it opens the byte itself and this is the more detailed view with all of the information that is available within the knowledge byte, all of the fields. Um, so you see a title, brief summary of purpose. The byte owner, I blanked that out. We'd actually do have an owner and experts built into or all set up against this knowledge byte. Um, the byte owner is the person who is taking responsibility for the byte. They might not be the expert in the byte, but they're responsible to ensure that the byte is fully developed, reviewed by experts and maintained as current. Um, and you can have more than one byte owner uh, and then the experts are identified here as well you see the byte status which we talked about a moment ago the last review date this doesn't have a review date yet because the first expert review on initial development hasn't been completed but once it has it will get a review date this review date will then use to help manage currency ensuring that all knowledge bytes are reviewed at least once every 12 months so the enterprise keywords and then down here in the content um, in this particular instance there's a video that's been inserted um, we can uh, insert a whole range of multimedia or document types which in the process of inserting them are stored in a document library on the SharePoint site you can also see here that someone's added a link to a discussion forum topic in an external SAP community network so in terms of adding a new knowledge byte the process is pretty straightforward all you do is click on new item and the template comes up you see underneath each of the um, fields there's a short description of what sort of information should go in that field that's to help guide the individual creating the knowledge byte um, the other aid that we have for people is if we click on how to create and edit a byte we've actually created a knowledge byte for that um, process of creating and editing a byte and you see we've got some information about knowledge bytes a little bit of guidance around byte owners experts roles and responsibilities but we've also got a more detailed document which goes through step by step a job aid document how to create and edit a knowledge byte so going back then to the Knowledge Byte site, you'll see here Site Management Notebook. I've set up a OneNote notebook where I've kept development notes at this stage of how the site's been put together because I have created a custom list. Um, that's partly to help me so I remember how this was done, but also if someone else has to pick up any maintenance responsibility for this site, um, it will help with that. Something I did want to highlight is that we've basically adapted some work that was done by Tonkin and Taylor, a New Zealand engineering firm, um, as a start point for developing our prototype. So they were generous enough to conduct a webinar in the Serbany 2010 forum last year, sharing what they called their knowledge shot solution. And we've adapted that. Um, they did have some custom development features in their knowledge shot solution which because of our IT policy at the moment we have not been able to replicate unfortunately um, but nonetheless I think we've managed to get some good functionality there just using standard functionality so apart from sharing a bit of information about the prototype you see I've added in a section on how I built this um, 
a link here to a video on the internet which talks about how to create custom lists and then step by step um, I've added everything I've done, all of the field settings I've used uh, to create a fairly detailed um, set of development notes for the site. So there you have it, an introduction to some of the key spaces we've set up on our community hub for our maintenance and engineering team. And I'll be interested to see how the team goes using those and um, I'll provide an update on my blog as to how we've had to adapt this technical architecture or infrastructure to support our community of practice.